video, we're going to look at the code called Understanding For Loops. In order to copy it, start at the bottom or start at the top and highlight all the code. I hold Control C to copy it, otherwise you can right click and can click on copy. It also tells you the shortcut Control C. Going to Code Vendor, delete all the code that is currently there and you can either click Control V or right click and click paste in order to paste it. Now that we have the code uploaded, over here on the left are uh, different lines that allow us to um, see, let's talk specifically about those lines of code. And as you can see, if you want to hide uh, different parts of the code, you can hide it. And the only ones that you can hide is if they have a pair of curly brackets. So to see if they have a pair of curly brackets, click behind the curly bracket and the other pair will be highlighted, just like these two. Another thing is the letter I. So if you highlight this letter I, that is a variable that we created. This variable is unique. We could change it to letter X if we wanted to or, or anything, we could put a word. The letter I gets highlighted in the rest of the code as well. So that way we can easily see where else it is. This right here is a comment that is denoted by these two forward slashes. The computer does not read comments. Void setup runs a program and runs it one time. It sets it up. Serial begin. This is really important. It starts with a capital S period begin 9600. This opens up the, the communication of serial monitor. And 9600 is the baud rate, the rate at which it talks to the monitor. This is called a for loop in line six. And the for loop has three parts to it. In the first part of the for loop, we, had, we identified the variable i as an integer. That's what int stands for. And it equals one. So it has an assignment of one. Its value is one. So the first part of the for loop is initialization. The second part of the for loop, which is broken up by these semicolons, that's what ends the statement. The second part is the condition. So this is saying that when i is greater than or equal to 10, the for loop will stop. So the condition tells it when to stop. And this sign in the middle means that when 10, when the value 10 is greater or i is greater than or equal to 10, it will stop. If it was the other way around, um, it would mean less than or equal to. This last part denoted by the semicolon, so the last part of the for loop is increment. And right now we have i equals i plus one. So the increment is how much it increases or decreases by each round. And as you can see, the value of i is going to be plus one, and that's going to be the new value of i. So that is um, how much it's gonna increase by, and Inside the curly brackets, this is the command we're going to have the for loop do as part of its loop. So it's going to print the value of i after each round. To upload the code, you click the right arrow and you have to make sure that you have Arduino Uno selected. So right here, Arduino Uno. And then you have to select the right port. If it's not working, you might have to change the port. If neither port work, you, you might have to change the USB that you plugged it into. If none of those work, a couple things could happen. You could have a faulty board and a cord, or you don't have Code Bender installed to Google Chrome. It says upload is successful, so I open up the serial monitor. In order to see what it says, I have to connect it. So connecting it, it's going to say 1 through 10 with no spaces, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You might be wondering to yourself, why wouldn't it put spaces there? Doesn't it know to put spaces? We never told it to have a space. We just told it to print I. We didn't tell it to print a comma after, we just told it to print I. If you want to make this a little bit more easier to see, you could type serial prints, parentheses, comma. So serial print will print whatever's inside the parentheses unless it's a value of something like that. Running the new code, we told it to print the value of i and then a semicolon. This has not changed yet because I've not connected the serial monitor. This needs to be set at 9600 because that's the rate at which we're talking to the computer. 
and now it says 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma all the way till 10. And that is the basics of a for loop. In order to switch around the for loop, let's say we want to start at a high number, so we're starting at 10, and let's go to a low number, so let's say 0. In order to go down, we can't increase, so we're going to decrease by 1. The reason this won't work, and I'll just show you, running the serial monitor and connecting this, the reason this won't work is because the value of i is already greater than 0. Or it's, the condition tells it to stop when the value of i is greater than or equal to 0. And our value of i is starting off at 10, so there's no way this program could start because automatically it's being told to stop. So we need to switch around this alligator symbol. So now what it says is this program will stop when i is less than or equal to 0. Right now it's allowed to run because i is greater than 0, but when it gets equal to or less than 0, it will stop. And running the serial monitor to show you, we start from 10 and we go to all the way down to 0. And just to emphasize that the letter I means nothing, you can put whatever you want. I'm going to put the letter G. Change all the I's to the letter G. Our new variable is called G. And this will do the exact same thing. You don't have to start at 10. You don't have to end at 0. These are just examples that we used. And that's what it prints.